morning, everybody, and welcome to A Course in Miracles. Uh, it's a beautiful day, and I always like to say it is a day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad. Anyway, thank you. And we managed to use Jamie's phone to get this going so we could do A Course in Miracles, but we didn't get to do the singing. So anyway, our computer guy is going to take a look. He, I guess he uploaded or changed some software on the computer, which messed everything up. But anyway, we'll get that sorted out. So we'll be able to listen to Jamie and join in for our singing next week. Yeah. Anyway, um, well, you know, we have a full moon coming in a few days. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. And that full moon will be in Aquarius, which is giving us, wow, an expansive kind of way to think about things and kind of a rebellious way too, because that beautiful Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. And for all my astrology lovers out there, Uranus is the planet of rebellion, revolution, change, so we're under the full moon um, auspicious energy of that beautiful planet coming in just a few days. But as you know, we, we may be feeling the effects of it now. But as Jesus says in The Course in Miracles, nothing has power over you, not even the moon. <laughs> the only reason we are influenced by things outside of us is because we are thinking uh, wrong-minded thoughts. And we're coming from wrong-mindedness rather than right-mindedness. So nonetheless, the Holy Spirit will use even the moon to help us remember who we are. Everything can be used in time and space to help us remember who we are. It's almost like Jesus is telling us, listen, we'll use the specifics in your life right? We'll use the moon and Uranus and we'll use your rituals and we'll use, you know, your children, your husband, your spouse, whoever. We'll use the specific things in this world to teach you that it's about generalization in the end, meaning that all those specifics that seem to have their own difficulties, problems, and everything else, it's all one thing. And it's all coming from the mind that says, I want to be separate from God. Yeah, and when I want to be separate from God, then I'm caught in the world of specifics. And everything seems to be the source of my problem. But through the mind training, thanks, Jane, the mind training with the Course in Miracles, um, or any other, you know, I happen to use the Course in Miracles because literally that book has been in my life for 30 years. I find it to be the only book I need. Um, but there's many others. I mean, as long as you're practicing what these beautiful masters have been teaching us through the ages, and that is get off the timeline, get off of being so attached to the past and thinking past thoughts, and stop projecting into the future and get right here into the present moment, but not in the present moment as you think it is based on the ego. The ego says, you know, get here now, be here now. But what Jesus is teaching us through this mind training is that to be in present moment is to be in the holy instant, to accept the atonement. And what is the atonement? You've never been separate from God. Never. Remember last week we talked about you are an idea in the mind of God. And ideas never leave their source. So guess what? You've never left God, and that's the good news. So that's what it means to be present, to come back in to this holy instant, to remember the atonement. That is your only responsibility, is to remember the atonement for yourself, that I have never been separate from God. I am an idea in the mind of God, and that is a so be it. Whew, that makes me feel good, right? But here's the catch-22. The masters say, and we'll call Jesus the master today, how's that? The master says, you have to look at your, mm, well, the specifics, but we'll call them 
your darkness. You have to look. You have to seek or search your mind for those dark thoughts and bring those up. In other words, remember last week we went down into the rabbit hole. We were, you know, going down into the root chakra where our unconscious mind is. And that's that programming. And everything is running, that, that's happening in your life today is the result of what you believe, what you hold true, that isn't true and was taught to you by people who were sleeping, right? So Jesus says, you can't bring light into darkness. We're told that throughout the Course in Miracles. You can't bring light into darkness. You have to bring your darkness to the light. You have, that's why you have to search your mind for those thoughts and beliefs and everything that you value in this world. You have to bring it up and have all of that dissolved, have all of that nonsense dispelled by the light of the spirit that's always in your right mind. Yeah, so it's work, but I love this Course in Miracles because it takes you through a very structured one day at a time, an undoing of a thought system that is totally 180 degrees away from truth. Yeah, if you just think about that, 180 degrees away from truth, God's world, if you will, the only reality that there is. Well, if you, if you think about it, everything you think you think and everything you think you know is upside down and backwards and it's meaningless. It's meaningless because you're thinking it with the mind of the ego and that mind that you're using to think with would have you believe that you're separate from God. And so that mind with a small M or that self with a small S is nothing but a con concept in your mind filled with constructs, ideas, values that have to do with this world, which is nothing because the mind that's thinking it is a no thing. The ego is a no thing that you happen to believe in. You make it real because you believe in it. And Jesus tells us, this beautiful master teacher, you can drop it by withdrawing your belief in the ego who would make you believe, tells you day in and day out that you're separate from God and I'm it. And that you are an individualized I. And that is the only problem that you have. It's a perceptual problem. You're seeing, perceiving a world that is based on fear because you believe that you've left God. And now you're full of sin. And, and even the churches will call you an, a bad sin. You're an evil sinner. You're bad. You're wrong. And when you have that thought that I have sinned against God, now you're going to feel guilty. And what does guilt do? It looks for punishment. And what do we do with it to get rid of the guilt? You hide it in the world. So you project it out onto people, animals, trees, dogs, grass, doesn't matter. You project all of these thoughts out and then the world and the people in it will simply mirror those thoughts. And then you go through you know, the victim and the victimizer, I'm blaming them, it's all their fault, blah, blah, blah. You'll play that game until you wake up and remember, oh, everything that I see is a thought in my mind that I have projected. And all the world is doing is mirroring 
my thoughts. Remember, ideas never leave their source. So all those crazy thoughts that you're thinking, they never left your mind. They never left. They're all in your head. Everything is in your mind. And then we see it animated. And then we attack what we're seeing, making it the reason we're sad, depressed, angry, fed up. It's that that's the fault but it's all you it's like you're the magician <laughs> you're making it all happen by how you think so what you see in the world what you hear in the world what you're experiencing in the world is all coming from how you think that is amazing Jamie says I have a question <laughs> okay all right hi everybody so good hi Jenny Love you, Jenny. I miss, we just miss so much coming to the center. I hope you're all doing well. Yeah, and Su Yin, Daniel. Hi, Daniel, over there in Singapore. Well, lots of kisses to all of you. Mary, yeah, I said, yeah. Okay, Kogi, awesome. Sorry, could you elaborate more when you said astrology, moon energy, family members who trigger me are just wrong-mindedness and why do you teach astrology then <laughs> i love your question yes that's so good okay listen number one let's go back to basics okay thank you for your question yes because it's going to take us back to the very beginning of the course of miracles okay let's do that so let me get that up here on my screen i was wondering who was going to ask me, well, why are you teaching astrology then if it's all just a dream? <laughs> Thank you, Yazid. That's awesome. Okay. Okay. The first thing, now this is in lesson one. Okay. So the first thing we have to know, now I'm basing all of this around that question, Yazid, so you're going to have your answer at the end of this. Okay. So we have to remember this one thought. We, you and I have one problem, one problem only. And the problem is a perceptual problem. You think that you are separate from God. And when you think that, you will believe that. And then the world will mirror that one thought. I'm separate from God, therefore, I'm an individual separate from God, and I'm going to have to defend my position, and I'll do that by attacking others, or whatever I need to do. I need to defend that I am an individual, I, separate from everything else. That's the problem. So now I use my body's eyes, which are the ego's eyes, Uh-oh, major issue. We're good? Okay. Okay. So this, this technology today is wonky. Bear with us. <laughs> so when you use the body's eyes, you are using the eyes, the ears, the five senses. You are using the ego. So everything separate from you, the moon, the stars, the nebulas, Uranus, your sister, your mother, Everybody, everything's separate from you. But in truth, it's all reflecting you. It's all a mirror of what you're thinking. The problem is you don't know what you're thinking because it's mostly unconscious. It's like 80% of what we think we're not even aware of. So Jesus says, you can use things in time and space, the moon, uh, the sun, your sister, uh, this bowl, anything in form you can use and I'll, be, and I'll be there with you in your right mind to help you understand the whole problem. So we can use specifics in this world. And the moon is a specific. 
So astrology is a fabulous tool that helps us understand our psyche, collective psyche, and your individualized psyche. Okay? And so is the teachings of the Buddha, so are the teachings of Sai Baba, so are the teachings of your Reiki master, so are the teachings of your Pranayama teacher. All of these things in form can be used to help wake us up. Okay? So what Jesus tells us here from, this is from the text, chapter 24. He says, to learn this course requires willingness to question every value that you hold. Just that in itself. Think about it. Everything that you value in this world, question it. We have to, we have to come to know the difference between the valuable, what has value, and what is valueless. You don't even know that yet. Not one can be kept hidden and obscure, but it will jeopardize your learning. So you have to look at everything. So it's almost like we're using the specifics in the world of form to help us understand the purpose of all of these things. There's a purpose and we'll get to that. No belief is neutral. Everyone has the power to dictate each decision you make in this world of form. For a decision is a conclusion based on everything that you believe. And you don't know what you believe. That is why it's so important for us to understand as students of Dharma, any Dharma, we just happen to be using A Course in Miracles. The problem is, I think I'm separate from God. I've sinned against God. Every religion uses this, you're a sinner. Okay, you're bad, you have bad karma, shame on you. You're a bad person. It's all, I'm a sinner, I'm evil. When I believe I'm a sinner, I'm full of guilt. I'm afraid God's going to punish me. That's what's going on deep down in the psyche. You may not be aware of it, but that's your fear. I'm afraid I'm going to be punished by God. I'm such a bad, evil person. Think of things that you've done in your life where you feel, I am so rotten, that is not forgivable. I'm such a bad person. If you wind that back, 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 what you're really afraid of is I've separated from God. I've killed God. I've sinned against God because I'm trying to make myself bigger than God. I want to be an individualized I. And because of that, now I feel so guilty for doing that. I've usurped God. I think I could. That's impossible. But you think you did. You believe you did. So now you're afraid of being punished. So think of when you've done something bad. You don't think it's forgivable. You don't think your mom would forgive you. You don't think that, you know, that person you told off five years ago would forgive you. You feel so guilty, so bad. But the original guilt is coming from, I think, I've sinned against God. I'm a sinner, therefore I'm guilty. So everything is based on the past. Okay, so now what happens is I deserve punishment. So now I'll be a victim. <coughs> Victims are people who believe they deserve punishment. Because why? You, you feel like you're victimized. Or maybe you're the victimizer. I need to punish you for what you did, what you said to me. I'll get back at you. I'll be vindictive. I'll be uh, like a scorpion and sting you when you least expect it, but some way I'll get even. It's victim and victimizer, punishment. The world me will mirror, it will show you what thoughts you're holding in your mind. And because the mind that believes it's separate from God is asleep, 
you'll blame them. Oh, if they wouldn't have done this, I wouldn't have been like that. If they wouldn't have said this, I wouldn't feel like that. I wouldn't feel this way if you showed up differently, you know. And that's how we try to get people to change so that we can feel happy. We're still sleeping and blaming the world for how we feel. Remember I talked last week about cause and effect? The only true and beautiful cause and effect relationship is you are a thought in the mind of God. You are the Christ mind in the mind of the Creator. Always together. There's no place where the Creator ends and the, and the created begins. They're one. But in this world of form, you have reversed that. So now you feel like you are at the effect of the cause and the cause of your problem is out there. Poor me. It's because of them. They did. They said, I don't have because of them. They caused my depression. The computer not working this morning caused my upset. No. The computer showed you that you have attack thoughts held deep in the mind. Oh, the technology is making me frustrated. No, <laughs> the technology is your teacher. It's showing you that you still believe you're a body. It's showing you that, that you are mad at a specific and you don't realize that, that that specific is there to show you. Its only purpose is to help you wake up and know that none of it is real. None of it has meaning. You still think you're separate from God. That's why you're angry. It's just so profound, this whole book. These lessons are so deep. If you really spend time and chew on them through the day, you will see how deep down the rabbit hole you'll go with the simplicity. These, le these lessons seem very like simple simple-minded. Uh-uh. They are teaching you how to be mindful. Wow. So in this, from chapter 24, Jesus goes on to say, for a decision is a conclusion based on everything that you believe. Okay, so now if you believe that you're separate from God, the mind splits, doesn't it? There's right-mindedness, that contains the Holy Spirit because the minute you decided that you were bigger than God, well, the Spirit went with you. What is the Spirit in your mind? The memory of God. And what is memory? A bridge. Anything that you remember in your life is a bridge back to that beautiful moment or maybe not a beautiful moment. But in this case, the Spirit in your right mind is called the memory of God. And the spirit is a bridge back to oneness. So you have, I am one with my father, but then my mind fell asleep. The tiny mad idea seemingly entered into your mind where you wanted to be bigger than God. Boom, the mind splits. But there's still a decision maker, you. You still are choosing between right-mindedness or wrong-mindedness. Right-minded thinking is okay, I've, I'm going to forgive and let go of this. I'm going to deal with the specific in the world of form with the Holy Spirit, okay, which is good news. It's a bridge back to oneness. Or I am going to be a total maniac in wrong-mindedness, which is the ego, which the ego is a no thing, ultimately. It doesn't exist. You made it by believing in it. And you can dispel it by withdrawing your belief from it. But when you believe in it, you just bought hook, line, and sinker the whole thought system of the ego, of this world. And it is a world, that the thought system of the world of ego is run by the laws of chaos. Wow. Okay. But now this world of form run by the laws of chaos, which is an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, like it's, it's evil. It's an evil world. When you look at it from wrong-mindedness. But who's the you 
that's looking at it from wrong-mindedness. The decision maker, if we're in Egypt, the decision maker is Horus, the beautiful son of God. You can still choose again. In the very end of the Course of Miracles, it says, the good news is choose once again. You can choose again and undo the past. Okay, so Jesus goes on to say, it is the outcome of belief and follows it as surely as does suffering follow guilt and freedom, sinlessness. Right-mindedness right is sinlessness. That's your freedom. Wrong-mindedness is guilt. Why? Because when you think you're separate from God, you're automatically guilty. And the whole thought system of the ego is based on you're a sinner. And so is everybody else. And you are guilty and you deserve punishment and on and on and on. But the Holy Spirit says, you can't deny the world. You're still in the world. You're not of it, but you're in the world. So the good news is we will use the specifics in this world to teach you about non-specifics. Everything in this world has the same purpose. What is it? To keep you distracted and to keep you mindless, to keep you believing that you are separate from God. And so you need this, you need that, I have to have that relationship. I have to have that, all that money. I have to, you will just keep on this treadmill of trying to find that stable, peaceful state, not possible because you're going about it from wrong mindedness. Okay. All right. Jesus says there's no difference among the things of this world. They're all there for one purpose, one purpose only, to keep you separate from God. In other words, they're all part of the illusion. This is the illusion. So all those specifics, the moon, the stars, the sun, the dance, the Reiki, the pranayama, all of it, we could say it's all part of the illusion. Oh, and then you have to be careful because the ego is really tricky. So it'll say, then why are you even bothering? Why are you teaching astrology? Oh, it's, it, has a, it has a bag of tricks up its sleeve. And the spirit says, no, 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 it's okay. We will use Reiki. We will use all your healing methods, whatever. But in the end, you'll wake up and realize. That's why Buddha laughed when he reached enlightenment. He woke up and remembered who he was. Do you need astrology when you remember who you are? No, because you are the sun. You are the moon. You are the stars. You are the Reiki master. You are all of it. Baba said, I create everything by just, just by a thought. He says, I can create universes by a thought. Wow. And so can you. Okay. Um, the entire world is reflecting the ego's thought system. That which you react to, that which you are triggered by, that which you hear that you don't like hearing, that which you see that you don't like looking at, that which you experience which you don't like being participating in, you made it. It all came from what you think what I see, what I hear, what I experience is all coming from my mind. And Jesus tells us in the Course in Miracles, he says, are you ready? Are you really ready to give up the world as you know it now? Are you ready? I am calling you out of the world, he says. Are you ready to let go of that? What he's really saying is I'm ready to call you out of wrong mindedness, right? Not be dead in the world, but are you ready to be called out of wrong mindedness and enter into the temple with me? I am the open door that no man can shut. Step through. Are you ready to step through? 
And that takes willingness to do the lessons or to work a program, even Alcoholics Anonymous, that first step again. Are you willing to admit? You know, you got to be ready, ready to admit that you have a problem and that your life is unmanageable when you try to operate from the ego. It is totally unmanageable. Okay. Um, and you just, you know, if, if the Course in Miracles is 180 degrees away from the world, then everything you're learning in this world is completely insane. Look at the world now. It is completely insane. It's an escalation of the ego's thought system that's based on separation, divide and conquer, winners and losers. It's all insane. And yet when we start to, to work and invite the Holy Spirit in and the memory of the sweetness in our heart, that we all want peace. That's what we all want at some level. But you're trying to find it in a world that's incapable of giving it to you when you think with the mind of, of the ego, the sep when you think you're separate from God. Okay? All right. So let's get to lesson one. Such a simple lesson and yet it this lesson encompasses the entire Course in Miracles this first lesson I have given everything I see in this room on this street from this window in this place all the meaning it has for me now, if you've done that lesson before, you've probably said, okay, yeah, well, okay, I've done, you know, I've given meaning to all this and I've given meaning to this and, you know, all the different things. But we're being invited here to go deeper with this lesson. To re what is it saying? What is it really saying? Okay. Um, if you think about it from this perspective, you think you're separate from God. So of course you give everything meaning because God has given no meaning to anything. What is spirit is spirit and what is material is material. So you thinking you're separate from God have come up with the meaning for everything in your life. You think you know why they said that to you. You think you know why they did that. You, you ever do that? You're in some kind of a conflict with someone? And you, you just wrote the whole script. It's like, well, I know why they said that. They said that because they think that I'm, and you have a whole story going on. <laughs> I have given everything I see in this room, on the street. You have given it all the meaning it has for you. And you've given it that meaning based on what you think. If you knew that you were one with God, if you believed that you were one with God, then you would see it as it is, without judgment. That's one of the Buddha's beautiful teachings. That's why this first lesson is the entire book. Yeah, and actually, and we're going to go through the seven lessons. Jesus tells us these first seven lessons are so profound. We touched on a few of them last week. These first seven lessons are, if you can get these at the depth that they are offering you freedom, well, okay? Um, nothing in this room, nothing in the street, nothing in your life, nothing means anything except the meaning you give it. So you can get up in the morning and go, oh, this day sucks. No, the day is just another day and you've decided it sucks. You look in the mirror, oh, I'm so ugly. No. You're just who you are, looking the way you do, and you've decided you're ugly. Ugly thoughts, ugliness comes from ugly thoughts. Everything is a thought in your mind that you've projected out, even into looking into the mirror. You know, people that have weight problems, you know, um, anorexia and bulimia, all these kind of, you know, diseases, they say that the mind has become distorted. You have a distorted way of distorted thoughts in the mind that you see something that's not there. Wow. And so the person, 
you know, wants to vomit all the time so they can throw up and not put, so they don't put weight on, so they can maintain this look because they see something that's not there. You never left God. You are this brilliant, peaceful light. You are just a dancing molecules of photons. Genius. So you're seeing something that's not there. You're in your wrong mind. But as the decision maker, who's the you that's seeing with distortion? Who is the you that's seeing this crazy world? Who is that? And what if you were in your right mind? You would get up with gratitude. You would get up with, this is a day the Lord has made, thank you. Another day to enjoy and to express and to experience and to learn my lessons and walk this path with the spirit beside me, a whole different way of being. Okay, um, and the true meaning of everything in this world is to forgive and go beyond the illusion of this world. That's what forgiveness is, to go beyond the illusion. And then Jesus will break that down or the spirit into specifics. I'm mad at my mother. She's such a, and I'm never going to talk to her again. That's a specific. So the purpose of that specific is to forgive. You are seeing something that's not there. It came from your mind first. You projected it onto your mother and she mirrored it back. And now you attack and blame her. But what if you rooted out that stinking thinking in your own mind, which is forgiveness? I forgive, I give it up, I root it out, and I see that I was hallucinating. And I recognize then, if my mother is acting like that, I'm just using that as an example, then that is a call for love. It's not for me to attack, it's not for me to blame, it's not for me to take a stance, it's for me to recognize that if they're not coming from love, and I join with them, I'm not coming from love either. And if they're not coming from love, it's my judgment that they're not coming from love. You know, we say, oh, they're not loving. Who's not loving? Would Jesus say they're not loving? No. Would Buddha say, well, that's not loving? I'm just, you know, I mean, we have to have the wisdom. If Buddha was your teacher, if Jesus was your teacher, he might say to you, no, do you really think that was loving what you just did? <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? I mean, we can't go black and white here in that sense, but um, you get my, my drift. Anyone that's attacking you is calling for love. Now, you might have to have a boundary, which is loving. You might have to maybe recognize that they're not coming from love because you attacked first on some level, right? The ego's really good at making you look like you're the winner and they're the loser. The ego is really good at making you look like you didn't do anything. <laughs> you know, I didn't do anything. They did it. And Jesus is asking us to search your mind and to go deeper, work with the spirit, and say, now, how did I get these results? What thoughts am I holding in my mind? What part of this illusion do I still want to be real? Because that's a problem. You want the illusion to be real. Because the ego is so insistent on being the one, the one and only. It is, it, it, it's insisting that it is an individualized, separate self, and it has the right, it has authority over. It, it wants to control, wants to boss you around. Have you ever seen a Buddha boss anybody? An enlightened person boss anybody? An enlightened person want to control anybody? No. So the world is a total mirror of what you want to be true. So nothing means anything. It's all neutral. It's just there. And you are giving it 
meaning. Um, okay, we're being asked to read these lessons really thoroughly. And we want to move beyond the words to the content. Okay? Um, which means you want to you want to look at the underlying content of the meaning that you're giving everything is it coming from fear or is it coming from love and is it coming from right-mindedness or is it coming from wrong-mindedness what thoughts am i holding in my mind about the specifics that i've given meaning to All things in this world are equally meaningless. Think about now, just think about all the things in the world that have really important meaning to you. All of it. Even your kids, your husband, your wife, your house, that BMW that's out there in the driveway, all the money in your bank, your factory, all your workers, your favorite Gucci bag, your gorgeous shoes, Jimmy Choo shoes, all the things, all the stuff, okay? Think about all those. They're all equally meaningless in the sense that they're based on the ego's interpretation, which is all about keeping you separate and distracted from knowing who you are as the image and likeness of God. Because now you're attached, right? And when you're attached to something, it, you give it a special function for you. I'm attached to my child. She must do. They must do. He must do. I'm attached to the money in my bank. I'm attached to my car. All of these things that you've given meaning to, they have to perform in a certain way in order for you to be happy. And they never do. Your bank account numbers are going to change. Your child is happy today and mad at you tomorrow. Everything shifts. Everything changes. So all the meaning that you've given everything in this world, no matter what it is, people, places, and things, all the meaning that you have given to these people, and you can be sure, it's based on you do as I say and I'll love you. You be as I want you to be, and I'll accept you. Money in the bank, don't go lower. Stay high and keep growing, and I'll be fine. Beautiful car in the driveway, don't ever have a scratch, and I'll be happy. All of these things, you have given meaning to all of them, and they have one purpose for you, based on the ego's purpose, function, and that is to keep you distracted and to keep you separate from God. Just go deep with that. Think about that today as you look around the room. Okay? It all serves the ego's purpose of separation. As long as you are perceiving anything with the five senses, you have a perceptual problem. You're perceiving it. You want it to be a certain way. You want it to taste a certain way. You want it to look a certain way. You want to feel a certain way when you're around it. You're assigning meaning to these five senses and they're the ego's interpretation. And just think about it. Your husband shows up and he maybe watches a, a TV program that you think he shouldn't watch. Well, who's the you that's made that decision for him? Wow. <laughs> and then you blame him. The, the TV's too loud. I'm saying this because I talked to someone this week who's having an issue. They, th her husband turns the TV up full blast. And she's on the verge of divorce. And he watches shows that she doesn't think he should watch. Okay. Now you've got a problem. Because you've assigned meaning to who he should be, what he should watch, how loud it should be, now you have a problem. One problem, I'm separate from God. 
one solution. Forgive the illusion. Move from that to this. Now, when you're dealing with specifics, the specific issue is my husband turns the TV up too loud. Bring that as simple as it sounds. Bring that to the spirit and ask the spirit, what would you have me say? Normally, what you would say to him is, can you turn down the damn TV? You know, <laughs> but that is not how you're not working with the spirit. And that's the whole thing. Are you willing to work with me? Jesus says the spirit in your right mind. And you will be told what to say, how to say it, because the spirit wants to create healing. Do you see? Okay. This is so deep. If reflect, it is. Yes. Hi there, Doreen. So good to see you. It's very deep. If, and this is what the master is telling us about these lessons. Don't just skim across the water and don't become like ritualistic about doing these lessons, but to give it some deeper thought. And you will see that everything in this world of perception, right? That everything, that, that problem is that you think you're separate from God. All of these things are meant to keep you as a separate I. I'm important. I have needs. I, 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 I. It's another teaching of our beautiful Buddha. The separate, individualized I. All of these things that you are so attached to and that you want to be different in the world of form. Under, underneath that, the content in your mind is saying, which is the wrong mind, do whatever you can to maintain a separate self. Whatever you can. Think about that. So that is why this I becomes so nasty. It's like, I'm going to do whatever I can to make you wrong and me right because I'm the one. That's what these things that you give meaning to are doing. Keeping you making you believe that you are a separate self, an individualized I. I still want to drive a BMW and it is okay as long as I, oh, Kogi, yes, beautiful. And here's the thing. I love that. Jesus, there's so many places in the Course in Miracles where Jesus, the master says, don't deprive yourself of anything. But who's the you that is driving the BMW? Is it the ego driving or is it the spirit? And not to be attached to it. You are not to deny the world. Don't deny yourself a cup of coffee. Buddha, again, our beautiful master says, the middle path. We're in the world. Enjoy the world. Enjoy that cup of coffee. Enjoy driving your BMW. But just know who's driving it. Just know who's drinking that coffee. Just know who you are as the image and likeness of God. It's not a stressful thing. But the ego will tell you, ooh, for you to know yourself as God, it's going to be hard work. Oh, it's going to be tough, man. You're going to lose all the skin on your fingers climbing those stairs to the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus says, follow me. I am the open door that no man can shut. And here's how you follow me. <laughs> Give up the dream world know who you are in that world. You are the image and likeness of God. Go about your day with the spirit in your heart and enjoy. You are meant to live a joyful, vital and creative life. So this is the difference. Religion taught one thing, that real hardcore stuff in the religions of the world <laughs> taught some really hardcore stuff. But in this new age of Aquarius, what you're learning is the master is in you. And what is the master? The light in your heart the beauty in your soul that's to shine forth. You're not here to control. You're not here to have power over anyone. You're here to connect with people, to connect because you are connected with the spirit. And now you are connected and driving your BMW, just loving the world and loving the people you're with. And you are showing them what it looks like 
to attract abundance. You're not saying, wow, look at me, I got this big BMW, I'm like the queen of the town. No, you are saying, this is what's possible. If that's, this is what you would love, to drive a BMW, I'm driving a BMW because I'm aligned with spirit. And everything that I do in my business, I do from alignment with spirit, and this is just the result. And then you can say, if you want it, you can have it, because it means nothing. You know who you are. You'll go get another one if you want. Yeah, beautiful. Hi, Jennifer, Jen, beautiful daughter, Jen. Mwah. Good to see you, Jen. Okay, so <clears throat> this first lesson is so powerful. It's trying to tell you, it, it's, Jesus is saying very clearly, these things in this world that are distracting you, that you've given meaning to, that are distracting you, are only there to, to to keep telling you, you're real, you're real, you're real. See, I can see it, touch it, taste it, feel it, hear it. I'm real. No, you are the image and likeness of God. Dance in the dance. It can be a charming dance, a beautiful dance. When you give your five senses over to the spirit, be you in charge be you in charge very different so just contemplate that okay so now the master's leading us into uh lesson two okay now he says i have given everything i see in this room on the street from this window in this place all the meaning it has for me um And he ends it, all right, he's saying, glance easily and fairly quickly around you and trying to avoid selection by size or brightness, color or material or relative importance to you. Just look around, even right now, as you sit here, look around, okay? He's telling you, um, don't, don't make it a, don't make it hard work. Don't make it like strenuous. Don't. Jesus is gentle. Master teachers are gentle. He's just telling you to look around. Don't, don't be, you know. He's telling you to be indiscriminate. Just look, okay. Look at everything. You've given all the meaning to all this stuff around you. Take the subject simply as you see them. Try to apply the exercise with equal ease. See, just ease. Okay, okay, I see this. Yep, yep, okay. Um, to use, you can use a body or a button or a fly on the floor, mosquito flying around the air or an apple. The sole criterion for applying the idea to anything is merely uh, that your eyes have lighted on it. Make no attempt to include anything particular, but be sure that nothing is specifically excluded. So you're just noticing, observing these things about you with no strain. You're not making it a difficult lesson. You're just noticing, okay? Um, and again, we're moving from the words and of this lesson to the underlying content of uh, or meaning of the meaning. As you look around, again, we tell ourselves, wow, all these things are equally meaningless. That's basically what this lesson is. It's reminding you that even though we're specifically seeing different things, at the end of the day, all of them are, are equally meaningless. And there's another chapter in The Course in Miracles where Jesus says there and I touched on this last week, there are or there is no hierarchy of illusions. They're all illusions. One is not better, one is not more important. It's like my hand isn't uh, any less important than my head, right? This bowl is equally the same as my glasses. Everything is equally the same. 
And, and we don't get that yet because we, you know, if you have something really a big deal for you, like you have to achieve a certain goal, that seems to have more importance to you than making breakfast. But they're equally the same. They're equally meaningless. That, that requires deep reflection. It's like, what? Because we have a hierarchy of what's important and what isn't. Oh, it's really important that you go to school and you get the grades and you get like A plus or whatever it is, you get the marks, but it's not as important for you to, you know, um, I don't know, lose a shoe in the park. But they're the same. They're equally meaningless. Not to your ego, right? To your ego, you have a hierarchy of illusions. And then the ego is so tricky because in that meaninglessness, you could become very indifferent. Ooh. And that's when you're disconnected. You know when you act indifferent because you think you're so enlightened? No big deal. Let it go. Okay. Think about that one too. Indifference is a result of you not being connected. Because when you're connected, you have compassion, not indifference. So the ego is very tricky. Very tricky. Everything in the world of illusion is equally meaningless because there is no hierarchy of illusions. However, Jesus says you must look at the specifics, search your mind, bring the darkness to the light. He didn't say be indifferent and it doesn't matter because it's all an illusion anyway. He tells us in other places in the Course, do not deny the world. You have to first be in the world before you can get move outside of it. You have to understand its purpose. And the purpose of the world is to keep you believing that you are a separate self. So he never says deny your body. He never says deny yourself. He never says deny. In fact, in his gentle teaching, in his gentle loving, he's saying search your mind for those things that keep you distracted from knowing who you are and then give them over to the Holy Spirit so they can be used for the purpose of remembering that you are a beautiful emanation of God. Isn't that so gorgeous and don't you feel so relieved that you don't have to deny, deny anything look at the priests in the catholic church that were told to be celibate to deny a natural function of the human body which is their sexuality now we see the result of that jesus didn't say that these are man-made rules the ego's domain rules of this world to keep you separate from truth. Think about that. Deny nothing. Look at it with the eyes of spirit and see that this specific form can be used to teach you the non-specific or the generalization of this world and the purpose of it, and that is to keep you separate from God. Okay? Um, Lesson number three, we touched on this last week. I do not understand anything I see in this room, on this street, from this window, in this place. I've given it all meaning. Go back to that. Everything, everything, you've given it meaning. Okay? Then Jesus says in the text, you are still convinced that your understanding is a powerful contribution to the truth and makes it what it is. That's what you believe that your contribution <laughs> is somehow adding on to truth. That's what you believe. So you think you understand what everything is for. Jesus goes on to tell us what you think you think and what you think you know is coming from a separate self, so you know nothing. The only reason that you think you know what this little dingy bowl, bowl is for is because 
It's coming from the past. And what is the underlying truth about things from your past? Everything coming from your past is a thought in your mind that says you are separate from God. Everything from your past, whether it's a cup, a pen, a foot, a hand, a ring, glasses, hair, whatever, any thought in your mind is that, that you think you've given meaning to my glasses, my hair, my cup, my this, the da 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 da. It's all coming from the ego who believes that it's separate from God and you are a separate self. And so everything you give meaning to is based on that. Everything you give meaning to from here on in is based on I think I'm separate from God and in order to maintain this separate self, this is how I need to think. You're on a linear timeline of the past. I'm separate from God. And so this is why I give everything meaning and this is the meaning it has for me. And then I project that into my future. And when I pick this up, I now know what it's for. But it's not to, I mean, okay, in the world of form, yes, I use it for meditation, right? But what is it? It's a distraction device. In truth, it's there to make me believe that I am a separate self. That it is my, okay, Wally, go. <laughs> That's my dog. Okay, no, no. Uh, yeah, everything in this world of time and space that I've given meaning to is there to keep me separate from God. And as long as I see it as being super important and valuable and it has all the meaning and I need it and it's just, then I stay as a separate self in the world. But if I move into right-mindedness, then I see this as a useful tool. It means nothing. It's just a tool that I'm using for what I'm doing as long as I'm in this world. So these lessons, as simple as they sound, they're very deep. And as you said, Doreen, they require, you know, really reflect, go in like introspection, thinking about all the things that you've given meaning to, all the things that keep you in the past. And all you're saying is, I want to be a separate self. That's what you're saying. I want to believe that I am separate from you and that I am this authority of my own life. That's it. Jesus goes on to say, to say here, um, the point of this exercise is to help you clear your mind of all past associations. Because everything from the past is to, to keep you in the world. To see things exactly as they appear to you now and to realize how little you really understand about them. It is therefore essential that you keep a perfectly open mind, unhampered by judgment, in selecting the things to which the idea for the day is to be applied. For this purpose, one thing is like another, equally suitable and therefore equally useful. The master's trying to get us to let go of the past. How many times? How do you, you live in the past? You know, let's say you've had a falling out with someone and then they show up. You don't, they're not in your space with your mind at like a clean slate. No, you, you have the story still there. And it's just to keep you as a separate self. So you still see the story. And then they show up and the resentment's there and the anger's there, but it's, you've pushed it down. You got a smile on your face, all of that stuff. It is so tricky, this ego. So Jesus is trying to help us let go of the past because as long as the past remains hidden from our awareness, we cannot undo it. You have to seek and search your mind. Look at your darkness. It's told us over and over again in the Course. Don't push it down. Let it up. Don't save face. That's a biggie. 
let everything into the light. Okay. Um, anything left there, it's buried deep, deep down in the mind. It'll, it'll rear its guilt ridden head. All this, these past judgments, this, these past beliefs, these, these values that you have that are totally insane. They're pushed down and that guilt in your mind, because remember you have guilt. It's unconscious guilt. You have guilt as long as you believe in the ego, you have guilt. And that guilt will continuously rear its ugly head. And, wh and what does guilt do again? Seeks punishment. You're afraid. You're afraid of being punished by God. So this cycle just goes on and on and on. Everything from your past is based on sin. I, I'm separate from God. I'm a guilty sinner. I'm guilty. Yep. Now I deserve punishment. Everything from your past is coming from guilt, sin, punishment, and fear. Jesus takes it to another level now. He's saying in step four, le lesson four, these thoughts don't mean anything. They are like the, thought, the things I see in this room, on the street, from this window, in this place. They sound so simplistic, don't they? They're not. They're meant to take you deep into the mind. Okay. What we see has no meaning. Okay. What we see has no meaning because the thoughts we have about what we see have no meaning either. <laughs> the things I see have no meaning because the thoughts I think about the things I see have no meaning either. Why? Who's seeing them? My perceptual problem. When I see with the body's eyes, then I'm giving everything meaning based on sin, guilt, fear, punishment. That's, yeah, go deep with that. Wow, the things I see in the world have no meaning because the thoughts I think have no meaning. I'm giving that stuff meaning and those thoughts have no meaning so guess what therefore I'm not who I think I am I don't exist Jesus says in the course are you ready to say I don't exist the I the individual I that you're so attached to are you ready to say that and yet if you give up this need to be in control and to be the one if you give it up you will have peace like feel that Jesus is teaching us in this lesson that the thoughts in the mind the inner and the outer the the the, the thoughts I think and what I see they're exactly the same exactly the same everything you see in the world is a reflection of the thoughts you think in your mind that you're not really thinking because they're not real thoughts and, and Jesus will explain that in lessons coming up, okay? Unlike the preceding ones, these exercises do not begin with the idea for today. In these practice periods, begin with noting the thoughts that are crossing your mind for about a minute. So you're probably already having thoughts like, oh my God, what she said just sounds ridiculous. That's dumb. I can't even believe, like what? The mind starts, right? Okay, then apply the idea to them. And here's the idea. These thoughts do not mean anything. If you only believe that, you would be free. Jesus says, if you're ready, if you're already aware of unhappy thoughts, you can go ahead and use them as subjects for the idea. Do not, however, select only the thoughts that you think are bad. You will find if you train yourself to look at your thoughts that they represent such a mixture. So we have like, Oh, isn't she cute? Oh man, that dress she's got on so ugly. Oh, I don't like that. We have both thoughts going on, right? So Jesus says, you'll find if you train yourself to look at your thoughts that they represent such a mixture that in a sense, none of them can be called good or bad. 
This is why they don't mean anything. Remember, anything of God must share of his attributes. Anything of God must share of his attributes. And the thoughts that you think that are so all over the place are being thought with a mind that's asleep. But Jesus tells us that anything of our Father, anything of our Creator, must share in His attributes. And if they don't, then it cannot be of Him. Wow. In selecting the subjects for the application of today's idea, the usual specificity is required. So we're looking spe at specifics. Okay, don't be afraid to use good thoughts as well as bad. None of them represents your real thoughts. Because remember, anything of God, share of his attributes. So, good and bad, none of these thoughts, good and bad thoughts, none of them represent your real thoughts. Your real thoughts are abstract thoughts, and these are covered over by these good and bad thoughts. The good ones are but shadows of what lies beyond. And shadows make sight difficult. The bad ones are blocks to sight and make seeing impossible. So at least good thoughts are about, they're like a shadow of, of what's ahead of them. There's something really glorious on the other side, but at least they're a shadow of what's to come because they're right-minded thoughts. Bad thoughts are total blocks. They're barriers. Okay? They're blocking your sight, this sight, the Christ light, and making seeing impossible. You don't want either. Real thoughts are thoughts of oneness. That's an attribute of God. First cause and effect relationship. God and the, the creator and it's created. The father and the son. Thoughts of oneness. And, and these thoughts of oneness are non-specific. Because what is one can't be broken into two. It's just complete oneness. God is, and then we cease to speak. God is, I am, all is well. That's why God is, I am, the only begotten Son of God, the Christ, all is well. All is well. Um, the Course in Miracles calls real thoughts abstract thoughts because they are thoughts of oneness. And the ego cannot understand that. You can't understand that. It's like, you can understand good thoughts and bad thoughts, but abstract thoughts, it's hard to understand that now. Okay? Um, from text 31, I touched on this last week too, salvation can be seen as nothing more than an escape from concepts. And concepts are good and bad. We say, oh, he's such a good boy, which says there's a bad boy in there too. Oh, there's so, look at how good she is, which is a concept because on the other side of that, she's bad too. Wow. Salvation can be seen as nothing more than you want to escape from all that. It does not concern itself with content of the mind but with the simple statement that it thinks. The concepts that you hold are who you think you are, this individualized I. I like this, I don't like that. That's good, that's not good. She's nice, she's not. This is good, this is bad. 
all concepts in the mind, covering up real thoughts, which are abstract thoughts of oneness. When you are at one with your creator, you have absolutely no fear. And again, I want to use these conspiracy things. A lot of people are talking to me about conspiracy issues these days. You just got tripped, trapped by the ego. That's what happened. When you get yourself into these conspiracy things, you just found yourself in a bad place. And that is the whole concept of the ego, is to distract you from knowing who you are as the image and likeness of God. Don't you think that the spirit in your heart will tell you where to go, what to do, and, and how to handle your life? Of course. The spirit will guide you home, will guide you to freedom. But when you're wrapped up with things in this world, trying to make the unreal real, you just got tripped up by the ego and you will suffer. You will be in such pain. You will be in fear. You will have lots of guilt. You will just, and the world is going to mirror all your fear. And you're going to think it's the world doing it to you. It's you doing it to you by how you think. This is dangerous to be involved and attached to anything in this world. From the ego's perspective, it is nuts. And yet, Jesus says, do not deny the world. I will tell you. I will guide you. We will navigate this world together. Can you see the difference? Okay. This is a major exercise and will be re repeated from time to time throughout the course in a different form. That's why these first seven lessons are so good. The aim here is to train you in the first steps toward the goal of separating the meaningless from the meaningful. We've, we have to really clearly know the difference between the meaningful and the meaningless. It is a first attempt in the long range purpose of learning to see the meaningless as outside of you. So this world, Jesus tells us right here, the master who got off the cross because he went beyond the illusion. Don't you want to follow a master who went beyond the illusion? How about the Buddha who went beyond the illusion and laughed because he went beyond the illusion? Don't you want to follow a teacher who's already done it? <laughs> I do. He says, I'm teaching you to separate the meaningless from the meaningful. And so this is a long range purpose of learning. I want you to see the meaningless as outside of you and the meaningful within. It is also the beginning of training your mind to recognize what is the same and what is different. The meaningful within are the Holy Spirit's thoughts. That's what the meaningful within is. Okay, the ego has value in this world so that we can, so that we will fully and totally believe in the reality of the thought system based on fear. That's, that's it. Okay. <laughs> the Holy Spirit, on the other hand, she'll have us perceive what is in this world so that we eventually get to a point where we say, oh, there is no world. So she'll have it. We'll deal with specifics. We'll go into all of that as we do the mind training. As you start training your mind, you'll work with all of that. And in the end, you, you will ultimately come to this conclusion and laugh just like Buddha. Oh, there is no world. Now you're free. Now you're home. Now you're at peace. <laughs> okay. Um, the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you guilt is guilt. Fear is fear. The body is the body. Spirit is spirit. Love is love. Peace is peace. Which one are you choosing? So the, Jesus is saying this thought about whatever it is doesn't mean anything. It is like the things I see in this room on the street, blah, blah, blah. You can use the idea for a particular thought that you recognize as harmful, 
how about the the you know right now we're just seeing chaos in the world it's just escalating and i just want to say for all my astrology students you can see it as within with as as so within as so within so without mars is squaring pluto saturn and um pluto saturn and jupiter throughout the month of august a square is an intense meeting of two planets mars is very right military and then of course pluto's transformation and jupiter and all you know that's a another topic that's a great topic if you want to join me on wednesday but you can see you can feel people are saying to me i feel so fed up i feel so angry about what's going on in the world so the planets are just reflecting what you're already thinking no planets doing it to you everything is in your mind and it gets projected out that's why i use astrology it's awesome okay all right lesson five this is such a key lesson they're all amazing i love this lesson i'm never upset for the reason i think we touched on that last week um we think we're upset obviously we think it's because of what's going on in the world the coronavirus the mass the conspiracy the lockdown the this the that we think that's why we're upset okay um and the reason we're upset is because you are choosing your ego as your teacher and not jesus the christ or buddha that's why you're upset because you're te you're you're choosing the ego as your teacher that's why you could put a monk in jail and they're choosing their Buddha nature as their teacher and so they are at peace you could put a a, a person that is in meditation and has equanimity in a cave in the Himalayas for two months and they will be so peaceful and at home because they are choosing the spirit as their teacher you are either choosing the ego as your teacher or you're choosing the Christ, the light, as your teacher. And you, as the decision maker, can choose again. If you're choosing the ego as your teacher, you'll know it because you'll feel stressful. And listen, I said this on uh, Wednesday at, at uh, Soul Astrology. I'll remind you all again, with Mars being so active hugely in Aries until January, we are going to feel the the aggression of mars viscerally in the gut because mars is the planet that rules the solar plexus it is a visceral feeling of Urgh! which is good news because when you feel it you now know you are choosing the wrong teacher okay <laughs> it's really good everything can be used okay what jesus is saying keep practicing with specifics until you learn that everything is the same and non-specific in this world. So we practice with specifics until we learn that everything is the same and non-specific because it serves one purpose, to keep you from knowing who you are as a child of God, to keep you from knowing that you are the image and likeness of God, to keep you from knowing that you are what came out of the mind of God. So go ahead, work with your astrology, work with this, work with this, work with everything you need until you know I and my father are one. So be it and so it is. You are the book. Get it? Thank you, Yazid. I hope that answers your question. Okay. All right, let's go on to lesson six because we did talk a lot about lesson five last week. Lesson six, I am upset because I am seeing, because I see something that is not there. Well, that sounds kind of silly. But what's upsetting you is within you, not outside. There's nothing outside of you. What's upsetting you is in here. Jesus is calling you out of the world and into your mind. It's not this that's upsetting you. 
I'm upset because of what's in my mind. I just blame technology. I blame my dog. I blame this. I blame that. Use that specific. Bring it to the Holy Spirit so you can return to right-mindedness. Okay? What I think I see is merely a projection of my thought. And that is for anything and everything in this world. What I think I see is merely a projection of my thought. That in itself. Take that in and reflect on that. Wow. That means everything. And basically that thought, we have to go back. That thought is I'm separate from God. I'm a sinner. I'm guilty. I deserve punishment. I'm afraid. And, and at the end of the day, even that thought isn't there either. Because remember, in the earlier lessons, we were told that what you think you think and what you think you see are mad hallucinations. Even the thoughts you have in your mind are not real thoughts. They are covering real thoughts, which are abstract thoughts of oneness. So even what you think never happened, it's not there, but you just believe it is. And now as you believe it, it becomes your reality. Oh my God, I love that line because it makes me feel like what? I have just been so crazy believing my thoughts and none of them are real? No, they're not. Jesus is saying, no, follow me. Follow me. I'm calling you out of the world. I'm, and I want you to get into your mind. And now I want you to see that even the thoughts you think are good or bad are all unreal thoughts that are covering true thoughts, real thoughts, which are thoughts of oneness. So anything that you did, thought, said, felt, heard, none of it happened in truth. And the Creator knows nothing about everything that you hate yourself for. Nothing at all. It's all a puff of smoke if you only believed it. Today's idea is useful for application to anything that seems to upset you and can profitably be used throughout the day for that purpose. However, the three or four practice periods which are required should be preceded by a minute or so of mind searching as before and the application of the idea to each upsetting thought uncovered in the search. Okay? Mind searching is a really important focal point of Jesus' teaching because the Master wants you to really be honest about your thoughts, all of them the dark thoughts, all the thoughts that you think about yourself, about others, the fear you have, the guilt you have. He wants you to search your mind. Okay? If you resist applying the idea to some upsetting thoughts more than others, remind yourself of the two cautions stated in the previous lesson. There are no small upsets. Now, in lesson five, um, we are told, like, even a small annoyance is a disturbance to the peace of mind. So even that you want to bring to God. There are no real, no small upsets. Everything is an upset if it's disturbing your peace of mind and you want to bring all of that to the uh, spirit because they're all equally disturbing to your peace of mind. Okay. And I can't keep this form of upset and let the others go for the purpose of these exercises, then I'm going to regard them all the same. So there's no upset that's bigger than the other. I'm really angry because this happened, but I'm slightly annoyed because that happened. They're equally the same because they all disturb your peace of mind. Jesus keeps reminding us through this whole Course in Miracles about the inherent sameness of all things in the world of the ego. 
in our mind there are specifically more important things and this is this sickness is worse than other sickness all oh, that cancer is worse than a you know broken toe and all these different they're all inherently equally the same everything in this world because it is all an illusion all of it the ego has given it hierarchy a hierarchy of illusions that is the first law of the world of chaos it's the k it's the world it's the it's a rule how does he put it in the course um the rules of chaos the laws of chaos the laws of chaos first one hierarchy of illusions and jesus is trying to tell us they're all equally the same no matter what it is if you're upset you're upset doesn't matter because it's disturbing you it's disturbing your peace of mind cancer's not worse than this a broken toe's not worse than that and he'll take us back and tell us why because there is no difficulty remember that one there is no difficulty in the order of miracles you get right in your mind there's no difficulty in the order of miracles how's that worded am i saying that right there is no difficulty in anyway i think you've probably read that a million times as i have and i can't remember how it's said but there's no difficulty in the order or the the hierarchy of illusion there is no hierarchy of illusions there okay thanks james there is no order, order in difficult there is no order of difficulty in miracles. Okay, there it is. So when we get right with the spirit in us, when we hook up to our God self, all things are possible. It's just as easy to heal a broken toe as it is cancer. It's just as easy to forgive this as it is to forgive that because there is in 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 the mind of Christ there is no hierarchy of illusions there's just they're all the same over there and so when you get right with God wow this is when the miracle happens okay and then the last lesson I wanted to touch on for today is I see only the past that's lesson seven so this lesson is it's like a summary of the first six and uh, Jesus is asking us how in, he's, he's saying to us, it's really, really important for you to clear your mind of past thoughts. Okay. And reminding us always here that old ideas about time are very difficult to change. And you have to think about what are past thoughts coming from? Number one, I believe I'm separate from God. And when I believe that, my mind is full of guilt because I think I'm a sinner, okay? So always think in terms of past, it's based on I'm a sinner. Past, it's based on guilt. Past is based on uh, punishment. Past is based on fear. Past, okay? So because you believe old ideas about time are very difficult to change because everything you believe is rooted in time and depends on your not learning these new ideas about it the ego is going to do whatever it can to keep you rooted in time what is time sin guilt punishment fear that's what time is as long as you're on a timeline you're rooted in sin, guilt, punishment, fear. Okay? And that's precisely why you need new ideas about time. That's what Jesus is telling us here. Okay? Jesus is saying the reason that you see the past in everything is because you want to maintain your separate identity, your separate self, which is based on sin guilt punishment and fear wow the first time this first time idea is not really so strange as it 
may sound at first, okay? Whenever you're upset, it's because you are equating something that's just happened with something that's happened in the past, always. And what is the past? Keep this as a note to yourself. The past is sin, guilt, punishment, fear, okay? Um, it's like you see a particular person and you know what you're supposed to do. You, you, you meet a certain person in town and they're like this, so you know how you're supposed to behave. And it's all based on sin, guilt, punishment, fear. So you can maintain a separate self. I. I win, you lose. Ego's domain. So... This is an authority. Like, let's say you meet a person and you, you think, oh, they, you know, in the past they treated me like this, and maybe you had a falling out with your mother, or they, um, act, she acted in a certain way. So it's like, well, now my, she acted like an authority in my life and like she's bigger than me. So now my anger toward her is justified. That's the way the ego thinks because it's always trying to maintain a separate self. I get to be like this because I'm a sinner, I'm guilty, I deserve punishment, or you deserve punishment, and it's all because I'm afraid. And all this person did was mirror your desire to be a separate self. Okay? Hate is always based on the past. Why? Sin, guilt, punishment, fear. Look at a cup, for example. Do you see a cup or are you merely reviewing the past experiences of picking up a cup? Being thirsty, drinking from a cup, feeling the rim of the cup against your lips, having breakfast and so on. Are not your aesthetic reactions to the cup, too, based on past experience? How else would you know whether or not this kind of cup will break if you drop it? It's all based on the past. What do you know about this cup except what you've learned in the past? You would have no idea what this cup is except for your past learning. Do you then really see it? Remember, the past is... I have left God. The past is, I'm a sinner. The past is, I'm guilty. The past is, I deserve punishment. I need to hide my guilt. And now I'm so afraid. Look about you. Uh, but first, oh wait, wait, let me go back here. So do you then really see it, okay? If it's coming from the past, do you really see it? Because this is true of everything that you see. You're literally seeing nothing because you're seeing the past, which is not there. Whoa, that's huge. Because why? You never left God. You're an idea in the mind of God. You've never left the source, ever. So anything that you see, experience, hear, taste, touch, whatever, it, it's not there because you never left God. But when you believe that you did, now you're full of sin, you think you're a sinner, you're guilty, you gotta hide the guilt in the world Afraid of being punished? Afraid God's going to get you? Wow. Look about you. This is e equally true for whatever you look at. Acknowledge it by saying whatever you look at. I see only the past in this little bowl. I see only the past in this cup of water. I see only the past in that face. It's, a, it's so interesting. 
Jesus is saying the world and the people in it, the things in it is an outward condition. It's an outward expression of an inward condition. What you see in the world is the thoughts you think in here. And the joke is this inward condition, the thoughts, they're an illusion too. Because when you are not thinking real thoughts, you're not thinking at all. The good and bad thoughts that are in your mind are cover-ups for the abstract thoughts of oneness. So you're not thinking, you're hallucinating. God doesn't know about all those silly thoughts you're thinking and all attached to, all afraid of the conspiracy issues out there, afraid of wearing a mask. Listen, so many spiritual people now are becoming <laughs> angry about wearing masks. It's, the ego will use everything in this world. Everything. It's, it's just so insane. I mean, if you really go back and do these lessons, maybe you want to start, because next week I'm going to carry on with the lessons. I think this is just so beautiful. Um, so we get a really deep understanding of what we're dealing with here around this nonsensical ego-mindedness. Okay? Um, Again, Jesus says, there is no hierarchy of illusions. The, everything in this world of form is coming from the same ego mind that, that, that you made. Okay? And um, they're all equally illusory. Nothing in this world is real. They have the, nothing is good, nothing is bad. It's all the same. You've given it all meaning, and those thoughts you think in your mind, they're not real either. They are cover-ups for your real thoughts of oneness. So then Jesus goes on to say in text 31, um, finally still another caution against the temptation to exclude what we feel is not important. So he's asking us again, you know, feelings, you have to look at your feelings, which very often is a veil concealing what we secretly believe to be quite important, what the text refers to as our secret sins and hidden hates. These are the private thoughts that I've been talking about that you must bring to the surface. Okay? Don't let anything escape. These feelings that you have, the sadness, depression, anger, hate, jealousy, all the feelings, that, you know, bring them all up. Let everything up into the light. Do not linger over any one thing in particular, but remember to admit nothing specifically. Glance briefly at each subject and then move on to the next three or four practice periods. Each to last a minute or so will be enough. And then, coming from the text, Jesus says, indiscriminateness in responding to the illusory world of perception remains the central focus of this early part of the workbook. Okay? So, it contains the means of undoing the ego's thought system of separation. The essence of miracles there is no order of difficulty among them. And this is such a beautiful uh, reminder coming from the master teacher. Uh, again, uh, and these are some of my notes that I've made as I put this together for you. Uh, private thoughts that are deep in the unconscious, which are the secret sins and hidden hates. We must not exclude them. We bring them up. And to remember the atonement, to be without guilt, means I have never left God. I could never be separate from the one. So in this holy instant, in this moment, to be in the moment means I accept that I am one with God forever and ever. That is the atonement. Okay. Um, what else did I write here for you? Yep, I think that's about it. Oh, it's 10 to 12. Well, that was pretty awesome. So, <laughs> there's no order of difficulty. Yeah, past. Sin, guilt, punishment, fear. Yeah. And then I'd like to end with this. 
anytime we're caught up in the past, try and remember that the past is equal to sin, guilt, fear, punishment, and the world will simply mirror all of that back to you. That's all you're going to see. Okay? And it's there then. The mirror is there for you to forgive it, meaning to give it up, to root out the problem, which is, I believe I'm separate from God. You're not. Never could be. And to accept the atonement that I am one with my Creator and then do the work in the world of specifics. Listen, it, this, you know, some Course in Miracles students go, well, you know what, only love is real, and, you know, I accept the atonement, so I don't have to do anything. Excuse me? <laughs> That's the trick of the ego. If you have hurt someone, you need to make amends. Like, this is practical. Jesus is telling you, Yes, you must deal with the specifics in this world until you learn that it's non-Pacific. So if you have hurt someone, if you have done something that's not very nice, you need to own it, to give it to the Spirit, and then say to the Spirit, what would you have me do? And the Spirit will say, apologize. Not easy work, is it? Because the ego never wants to apologize. <laughs> so it's not telling you to just like, oh, I'm a pink and fluffy bubble and I don't have to do anything in the world because I'm a Course in Miracles student. No, no. Jesus is very practical and he's telling us very practically to use the specifics in this world and do what's necessary to make amends, to, to heal, to do whatever you need to do until you get to a point where you know who you are as the image and likeness of God and then you would never hurt anyone. You, you know, you would just be working with your higher power. Okay, so with that, let's close our eyes while I just say a little prayer coming to us from the 12-step program. I love this prayer. So we close our eyes and we give thanks to our Creator. So grateful that this is another day that we have to awaken. And so, dear God, I just want to be able to accept that I am responsible for how I think. I want to, to accept my role in the healing of the world, and that is to wake up and remember who I am as the image and likeness of God. I, I ask for the Spirit in my mind to descend upon me and to awaken every, every cell in my being, that my aura become so filled, so light-filled, that everyone who sees me knows that God lives in me, and they feel safe in my space because I am connected to my God. And that's, that just makes them feel so good. This is my, my desire, God, above all else. This is my desire. So I ask you to help me to accept the things I cannot change then, and the courage to know what I can change and it is only with the wisdom of the Spirit in my mind that I know exactly what to do. This is my prayer for today. And so it is. Together we all say, Amen. And so just to let you all know that um, I'm so grateful to all of you. I would like to say once again, thank you so much for your contributions, for your donations for your comments, your emails that really, I got so many emails over the last while that really gave me the insight to go back and start with The Course in Miracles in Lesson 1 and really go into it. We'll go through the whole book. And uh, so I really appreciate that. And again, for all your help, it means so much to, to us. And uh, we've been able to get some software. There's a little glitch. Our technical guide did some changes this week and it kind of disrupted things. So, but it's being worked out and uh so thank you from the bottom of my heart from the bottom of jamie's heart and we'll see you wednesday for a soul astrology and uh just know that i love you all and i'm sending you so many hugs and kisses bye for now <laughs>